Welcome to Maverick University, an educational series featuring ministry modules taught by ministry-minded Christians and designed to help Christians become more effective in their service for Christ. Welcome to another edition of Maverick University. I'm your host, David Hallberg. Joining me today in studio is Brother Sergio Gonzalez. Brother Gonzalez is a church member at Northwest Bible Baptist Church and a bus captain as well. I've been talking with Brother Sergio about the bus ministry, and you can view our previous conversations in the description below by clicking the links there. Thanks, Brother Gonzalez, for joining us. And we're going to end our conversations about the bus ministry today by talking about the soul winning bus ministry. When we think about bus ministry, um, we've got to understand that the riders have to come from somewhere. Yes. Um, a lot of the bus ride, bus workers' time on a Saturday might go to visiting those uh, you know kids who regularly ride the bus, maybe visiting those sometimers and visiting those hardly evers. Yeah. Um, but then again, you do need to knock some new doors and you know, draw some fresh blood and get some new writers for church. Is there something that you do in particular that um, allows you to be able to make contact with fresh faces and be able to, you know, talk to about kids about coming to church? But more than that, I mean, getting the opportunity to share the gospel. Oh, with yeah. People. You know, one thing I learned, you know, is that the, the church bus, it's a tool to win people to Christ. Mm -hmm. And I told all my workers, I even to my family, we're not the Salvation Army. We're not a YMCA. We're not a boys club and a girls club. We're, we're going to just help them out. No, no. Our main goal in Northwest Bible and the bus ministry and any bus ministry is to win them to Christ, get them baptized, and get them in church. That's your main goal. But it's mostly a soul winning. You need to worry about where that kid is going to spend the rest of his life. Not, you know, we're going to have a program. We're going to have fun. No, no. That's YMCAs and boys club. They do that. But I think for we should do differently as a bus ministry is always be a soul winning church always when be so conscious of these bus kids you know give them the gospel every single one of our bus kids that walks in our bus i told all the workers you have to give them the gospel as soon i don't care make time on the way home or anything but they hear it in church but we have to be a soul winning church we have to and like i said i told my work because it bothers me a lot when you know we have some people that are like oh you know, we should do this program. I'm like, no, no, let's stick with soul winning. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, let's do this. No, no, no. I tell them, no, no, I, let's stick with soul winning. No, let's stick, stick, it with, like, let's stick, stick with what our preacher has. Just keep soul winning. Keep knocking doors. The program, on top of that, that's fine. On top of that, it's okay. It's okay. I told them, I don't have no problem with that. But we have to make it a priority of just worry about these people. Where are they going to spend their eternity? And that's, that's what I think I worry about the most. I, I'm not worried about helping them out. You know, many people, when I knock on their doors, they're like, oh, I have a problem. And then the first answer I say, you know what, I, had, I know somebody that could help you out. Oh, really? But I have financial needs. I'm like, I know somebody that could help you out. And they're like, oh, really? Boy, I have problems with my marriage. I know somebody that could help you out. And they're like, really? Anything. They always, I heard it all. Mm -hmm. And I always say the same thing. I know somebody that could help you out. And they, of course, they're all like, oh, who is it? Who? I'm like, come to church. I introduced I introduce you to that person. So we give them the gospel, and most of the time, I'm like, that's my God. I'm like, that's my God. That person could change your life if you just get saved, get born again, and get involved in the church. And he, you see how much he'll change your life. And a lot of people get shocked. They're like, well, I thought you were going to introduce me to this person, this physical person. I'm like, yeah, he's real. I tell them, and that's one thing about the bus ministry, you know. They think it's for kids. It's not. But, you know, we got to make it seem, you know, we got to tell these kids it, our God is real. I mean, the bus route, just alone, the bus route, if you really, really think about it, doing it for so many years and keeping people safe and the amount of people that got saved and got touched by the bus ministry, that alone is a miracle. Yeah. It's alone. You know, so that's, that's one thing we learned about the soul winning church. It's all about uh, bus route. It has to be soul winning number one. So that's the foundation of it all. Oh. And if there's fun, you can put that on top of that yes. foundation. Yes. If there's humanitarian Things and we t we talked about that extensively yes. in our previous conversation about being a servant. Um, that's all we talked about was just meeting the needs of others and seeing the needs. But that was built upon the foundation of you know, getting people the gospel. Peter Hall, because I always pictured myself. I always pictured myself when I'm in heaven, and I'm in heaven, and I see this bus kid, you know, just coming up. It's like you know, you're the reason I'm here, Brother Sergio. You ran that bus, and the reason I'm because of you. 
-hmm. Or you could be like, you know, that kid is in hell and he's saying, you know, you, you went by my house so many, I rode your church bus and not one time did you tell me about Christ. Mm -hmm. Not one time did you warn me about the place. You, we had a program, we had goldfish, we had Carnival Sunday, but not one time did you give me the gospel. And that to me is like eye opener. I was like, no, no, no. I don't want to feel that way. I just want to make sure that everybody on the bus route gets, gets the gospel, clear, present gospel. I'll be honest, you know, in my involvement in the bus ministry as a young man, I would look at other church ministries and you'd pull up to maybe an apartment complex, you know, to you know, do some visiting on Saturday and things like that. And some other neighboring churches there and they're handing out food or whatever else. And people are clamoring and, oh man, this church is really helping us. And I'm like, man, why, why can't we do something like yeah. that? And I, I you know, failed to realize that these people are getting physical bread from these churches, yeah. but they're not getting spiritual bread. And you'll, you'll be amazed that a lot of these people, a lot of these people, when they really need, really, really need help, they don't go to those churches. Mm -hmm. They find you. They find Brother Sergio. Like they, I hear it all the time. Let's ask Brother Sergio. Let's ask somebody from Northwest. They know what, they know, they know what to say. They don't go to those churches. Yeah. Even though they go and attend them, their families attend, they don't go there for the real answers. They come to us. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord for you know a soul winning bus ministry. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about some of the people that you've been able to reach? Oh yeah, the bus you know, ministry? yeah. Now we were talking a little about it. There's, I have a lot of the many, many years I've done it. There's a lot of stories I could tell you, many, many stories. And one story that I will never forget, I, my wife and I, back in the 90s, we were saving up for a brand new Nissan Altima, 1991. I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, it was fully loaded. I mean, we, it only, I think it only had 150 miles. Oh, wow. And we saved up for it. And uh, it was our turn to pick up some bus kids and bring them to the bus, you know, because we had so many kids. And we pick them up in our car and drop them out on the bus. And this kid had a nail. I don't know why he had his nail in his pocket here. And he rubbed up against the car and totally scratched it from one side to the other. So totally unintentional. Unintentional, and, oh, but man. still, I was angry. I was like, oh man, here's my new car, and now look how it looks. A bus kid did that, and then look, and I told my wife, I'm like, oh no, look at my bus. I'm like, look at my car, man, this bus kid did that. Like, oh. But then you're like, oh, it's okay. He didn't mean to do it, so it's just a material thing. I'm like, let's just go with it. But I tried to hide it, put some little bond, it didn't work, but it is what it is. It's one of those <laughs> had to get broken in, I suppose. They had it broken in, and I was like, and that, but that same kid, one time, uh, we were taking him home, and Brother Hallberg, I'm driving, and I'm, 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 I'm at a red light, but I hear my car revving up. I'm like, wait a minute, why is my car revving up? And I look down, and I see a little hand, a little hand under my seat, pressing the accelerator. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, thank God I had my, my foot on the brake. Because if not, I would have, but this kid went underneath there and was just, just pushing it down. It's like, go faster, go faster. I'm like, I said, get down, get out of there, man. Wow. You're going to make me crash. <laughs> but I just saw it when I, it's funny because I, when I saw it, I looked down, I just see this little hand just pressing the accelerator. Like, <laughs> oh, those stories, I, I'll never forget that one. That was because yeah. we almost died. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are there some methods that you employ when you go out soul winning? Um, yes, yes. On the bus route? I mean, some people, um, you know, they may just go straight, you know, door to door to door to door, maybe kind of just trolling like a fisherman yes, would looking yes, for, yes. you know, bus riders. What, what kind of methods do you use? In well, employ? you know, I, I go door to door, but most what I use most of the time is the, the clover leaf. Like if somebody lives on the first floor, I would go upstairs sideways, sideways and down. And I just do the and I visit everybody in that whole area. So visually, when I come back and visit that kid, I know that I knocked on all these doors. You know, because okay. there's as a soul winner, you you forget to write down an address, you forget to do this, and or you're like, it's happened to a lot of people, including myself. Were we on the street? Where we? Where, I think I think we knocked the street before. When did we knock the street? Two years ago, three years ago. But when I do the clover leaf, it reminds me. This kid comes to church, and I know for a fact I did up, down, side with side. I visited everybody in this block. Mm -hmm. So then I go to the next one, and I do the same tactic there, and I just that's what I do around. But. Uh, I still do use Brother Hiles' way where I spend my bus route the first hour and a half, two hours doing my bus visits, and then another two, two, three hours knocking new doors. Mm -hmm. That's the, what, the, the, what I, I've been doing it for many years. That's my system all, every Saturday. Do you ever kind of just go through the neighborhood and just look for evidence of 
you know, families that have kids, maybe some toys in the front yard or something like that. Well, you know, you can kind I, of target. I a little used bit. to I used to do that no more. And, yeah. and the times kind of sad. The times we live in, sure. you can't do that no more because yeah. I think you're a creep. You're, you're a creep. You're like, why is that guy <laughs> walking? Through? Why is he looking in our house? What's he doing? You know? I'm like, so I don't do that anymore. So I just go door to door because I. It happened to me one time. It was Michael and I. We were driving and we seen this one Haitian guy. I think it was African or Haitian. So we pulled over next to him and he starts running, and I'm like, why is he running? So we're like, hey, we're just going to give you a track. We just stopped and was going to give him a track. And he tells us, don't do that no more. Don't do that no more. You scared me. You scared me. I thought you were going to do something to me. I'm like, no, man, we're just going to give you a track. So we don't do that anymore. Michael yeah. and I, we learn. We don't do that anymore. We knock on doors. We per tell them who we are and stuff. And But I don't drive around anymore, you know, looking for cars. I mean, looking for bicycles or, you know, play things. I just I don't do that anymore because it's backfired to me many, many times. Have you had um, some success with, you know, uh, witnessing to parents? Obviously, a bus ministry can be geared toward children, and often it is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it can be designed to also, you know, get mom and dad into church. Well, you know, my main goal, my main goal is always after the parents. Yeah. Always after the parents. I When I knock on the door and I have a regular kid, I always say, hey, I never ask them to come to church. Because if you ask them, are you coming to church, they give you any answer or they'll lie to you. I say, okay, buddy, I'll see you at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Where's your mom? And that's always right away. Where's your mom? Oh, you know, because if they try to lie to you, you want to talk to mom. And they'll tell you, oh, no, he's lying to you. He's coming to church. But I always make it a point to talk to their parents. Hey, where's your mom? You know, I know a lot of people use different tactics. I always call mom and dad, mom and dad. I never say Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Garcia, because there's so many people that you'll forget their names. You know, you're like, so I always keep it to mom and dad. And most of them respond very well. I'm like, hey, mom, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. Brother Sergio, how are you? Hey, dad, how are you? Everything good, dad? Oh, yeah, I'm good. Brother Sergio, how are you? I'm like, good. So I always use the term mom and dad, mm -hmm. you know, because I want the kids also to respect your mom and your dad. You know, I don't, I don't say, where's your mom? Or I don't say Mrs. Mrs. Torres or Mrs. Blah, whatever it is. I always say mom and dad, even though in the most of the cases, I'm much older than they are. <laughs> and it's kind of weird me yeah. saying mom and dad, and I'm older than they are. But I've been doing using it for many years, and it works for me. All right. Well, tell us some more stories. Uh, who else have you reached in the bus Well, ministry? you know what? There's, uh, and when I was in Florida, uh, you know, I moved, my FedEx transferred me to Florida. And uh, there were three, three teen, four teenagers in Florida. And they were rough kids. I mean, rough, rough kids, rough kids. And I was like, you know what? Let me start talking to these kids. And they were very attracted me because I was from Chicago. They wanted to know about the gangs and this and that. So I started talking to them about it and everything else. And they never met somebody like me. So I said, you know what, guys? Enough of talking. This, you know what? Our, our, the pastor of this church, Pastor Bill Gorman, wants us to start a bus ministry. And you guys are going to be my first workers. Oh, well, we don't know. What is that? So I'm like, you know, let me explain to you what we do, this and that. And those rough te those teens were rough. I mean, they were rough around the edge of these guys. I mean, they were bad. And... Uh, I started working with them, and we started a bus ride, and the biggest day we had in Florida was 85 on one bus. Wow. So, but the neat thing about it is that two of them are called to be preachers. Joe and Jeff are called to preach. And Francis, he's a Haitian kid, but the other kids, you know, they're all called to preach. And it was pretty neat that God used me to help these teenagers out yeah. in their rough time. And once in a big while, I get a text message from their dad saying, Brother Sergio, thank you so much for what you did for my kids. And out of the blue, one time I was very discouraged about the bus route. I, like I, I, th I thought I was a failure and this and that. And I get a message from him and he said, saying, Brother Sergio, thank you so much for what you did for my kids and thank you for everything you invested on them. And I was like, you know what? Hey, that made me feel good. And you know, that's the time where you, you're like, you know, the bus route is worth it just for stories like that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and more recently, uh, it just happened a few months ago, uh, we have an area in our in our bus route where it it changes from you know race. It goes from Indian to Spanish to Black to White, and more recently we've been having our Honduran people from Honduras. Okay. And uh, uh, we went and knocked on this kid's door, and I we asked him. This little boy is like, "Hey, listen, we use I use the same tactics as Louis Ramos showed me." I'm like, "Listen, I'm gonna take you with me." And, I'm, and you know he's never been to Arby's. I'm like, "I'll take you to Arby's to eat, but just show me." Uh, your friends around the neighborhood. Out of that little boy, out of that little boy, he took me to all these houses. Out of that little boy, we bring out 35 people from that neighborhood wow. because of one little boy. One little boy, and I took him to Arby's, and he's never eaten Arby's before, ever, ever. And every Sunday morning, he's there, ready, ready, just ready 
We didn't go on the bus, but out of that little boy, we did our count. And last week, out of the little boy, there was 30 plus kids that came, not on kids, moms and dads, families, because of that little boy. And that's the results of a soul winning bus ministry. Soul winning bus ride, yep. And it was amazing with that little boy, you know, he just let us in. Many people got saved and baptized through that little boy. Thanks so much, Brother Gonzalez, for Thank telling you. us about that. And you can see our other conversations with Brother Gonzalez about the bus ministry. If you click the description below, you'll find some links that'll take you to those videos. Thanks you so much for watching.